Okay, it looks like today we have a A1502 with an A204924 board that has no green light in the charger. You can see here that the charger light is not illuminated. There's a few things that can cause this problem. One, we could be missing PP3V42, which is required for the one-wire circuit to work and for the SMC to turn on. Number two, our SMC itself could not be running or could be bad. Number three, we could have an issue with the SMC reset circuit that causes the SMC not to run. More rarely, we can have an issue within the DC in-rail or within the DC in-board itself. This is pretty rare. The DC in-boards really don't fail, fail that much. So a good first line test would be to measure the voltage on PP bus G3 hot. You may ask why measure voltage on PP bus G3 hot. Well, one, if PP bus G3 hot is present at 12 volts, then we know PP3 V42 is present. Number two, if uh, PP bus G3 hot is low at like 12.25 or 12.26 volts, we know our SMC is not running, so we know we have an is issue with either our SMC or something in the SMC reset circuit. So I'm going to go ahead and measure PP bus G3 hot. We could see it's at 12.37 volts. Now this is not an accurate test because the battery is plugged in. So we're going to go ahead and unplug the battery. Always unplug the battery before doing any system board measurements with the charger plugged in as the battery being plugged on will throw off your readings. So let's try again. So one lead on ground, one lead on PP bus, and we see that that is 12.24 volts, which means the SMC is not running. So we likely have an issue with um, our SMC reset circuit or something with the SMC itself. Our logic board is now out of the enclosure. Now let's have, go ahead and have a look under the microscope. Okay, here's our SMC area, and we see this area looks very clean. We don't see any liquid. Here's our SMC reset chip. SMC reset chip looks pretty good. There's a little tiny bit of something right here, but that's nothing really to worry about. But otherwise, this area looks fairly clean. I don't see anything yet that's of concern. But let's talk about this for a second. So why would... Why does this affect the green light? So why does this affect the green light, and why does PP bus G3 hot... Um, become low at 12.24 volts when the SMC is not running. Well, the SMC needs to talk to the battery charge controller right here. This is the ISL6259. So when the SMC talks to this chip via these two SMC data lines, then the voltage um, goes up to 12.5, which is required to charge a battery. The battery will only charge if it is between like 12.5 volts and 12.6 volts. You know, you can go a little bit over that and it'll work, but at 12.23 volts, the battery will not charge. And um, oftentimes the battery detection part of the SMC will not work if that is at 12.23 volts as well because it needs the ISL to work like this. And if it's not, if the SMC is not talking to the ISL, then none of this is going to work. So what we can go ahead and do is check SMC reset voltage on this resistor right here. So this is going to be R5100 and this is going to come out of U5110, which is our SMC reset IC. If we measure here, we, it is actually zero volts. So let's look at the meter. So I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera. So here's our meter measuring on this resistor. It is zero volts. Now a few things could be happening here. Number one, the SMC reset chip could be dead, or number two, there's an issue with the SMC itself. So basically what's going on right now is, you know, you have one of those reset buttons in the front of your PC, if you ever built your own PC. What's going on is the reset button is basically being held in and not letting it turn on. So this could be caused by a few things. So one thing I always like to double check, although the area looks pretty clean like there's no liquid, I always like to tilt the board up and look under the SMC to see if there's any liquid under it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So let's tilt the board up and just have a look and see if we see anything suspicious. So if we tilt the SMC up, notice we have a little bit of junk right here. It's nothing too serious, but there's a little bit of, of junk right there. And that if there's liquid under the SMC, that can definitely affect it. Let's look at the other side of the board now. Other side of the SMC, if we can see it. And that looks pretty clean. I don't see anything there. So it does appear that there is some junk right here. I can't really see if there's any under there, and it does look like there's some under there. See that? See those balls right there? It's hard to see, but there's definitely some junk under the SMC. So how do we fix this? Is it really um, necessary to replace the whole SMC? No. So you could re reflow a flip chip CPU, like something like this, Okay, if it's dead and make it work temporarily, I'm not saying do it, not this particular model, but CPU and GPU when they fail, you know, you can heat it up with heat gun, it'll make it work for 30 days, and then it dies. Well, 
with the SMC, a lot of people get thrown off. You can reflow an SMC if there's corrosion under it, and it will work permanently. It's not a flip chip design. It's not like one of those temporary solutions. A lot of technicians get thrown off by this. I think it's a temporary solution, and it's not. When we reflow an SMC, wh what we're doing is putting flux under it and clearing all the junk out from underneath of it. There is no need to reball this if you're in a situation like this. Another thing I get is people will say, well, can I reball just reball the SMC? It's like, no, it's not necessary. Um, Sometimes the SMC itself will be dead and require replacement. However, if you give it a good reflow with flux and heat, then it'll be most likely be fine. It's 100% a permanent solution. It's not going to come back like it would a GPU or something. It's just to clear the corrosion under it and restore all the solder joints under it that, are be that have been degraded by that corrosion. So we're going to do that now, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that um, successfully. So... Whatever you diagnose it, this is don't just go ahead and reflow an SMC without diagnosing first, but once you get a case where you do need to, what you go ahead and do, this is my personal preference. A lot of people like using like 100 degrees Celsius to take the edge bonding off, but I prefer to use 430 degrees and just a quick burst of heat. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is get my hot air on, give it a quick blast of heat like this. I'll let it heat up. And I find the edge bonding comes off much easier. Sometimes the edge bonding will come off in a bunch of pieces, and that makes it much harder when it's like that. If you don't get the edge bonding all the way off and you reflow it, you risk uh, messing up the balls a bit, and you may actually have to reball it in that situation. But I like to use heat like that because it just comes off so cleanly. And whenever it's a little bit soft, so you see how it's like getting harder there? Just heat it, hit it with the heat again. If you heat it too long, it'll become brittle and fall apart, and you don't want that. Just give it a quick blast of heat to take it off. It should come off very cleanly. Another thing about the SMC, they are very resilient to heat, so it's not one that you're really going to overheat by, you know, cooking it with too much heat these things these things are pretty tough and resilient to to heat so compared to like a CPU and you heat it and it can die very easily these things are pretty tough okay so what we're gonna go ahead and do now let's get some flux this is Amtec NC560, which is compatible with lead-free solder. Kind of important if you're going to be um, reflowing a chip that has uh, lead-free solder underneath of it, which this does. So I'm going to put a good amount on here. Doesn't matter how much we use, we're going to ultrasonic it anyway. I'm going to heat this. I'm going to heat it from far away. The goal is to get that flux under there and melted nice. And then I'll move into it closer once that flux is kind of burned away. So I'm about two inches away from it. Just heating. Eventually here we'll see it start to move a bit. We'll tap it with the tweezers to make sure that it's completely reflown. We don't want to just heat it up. We want the chip to actually be liquid on all the balls to restore those connections. Now this only works if it's corroded. This isn't going to work if the, uh, the chip is dead itself or if there's no corrosion. Don't do this unless, unless you know there's corrosion under the chip. So see that it's liquid now. If I tap it with my tweezers, it moves a bit. You don't want to knock it off, so just make sure it's liquid. Then we're going to let it cool a bit before turning it on. If we look now, see there's a few balls under there that really don't look good, so there's two right there, so I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go another pass on this. I'm also going to make sure there's, it looks like there's a little bit of something under here. I'm going to try and clear this out with my tweezer. It's not too bad. I'm just going to try and get under here. It looks like there's a little piece of edge bonding left. This is actually corrosion, I think, right here. But there's just a little piece of junk left. I can try and do now is give it another go. There's a little piece. You don't want to leave anything under here. However, that little piece isn't big enough to really do anything. So what I'm going to do is give it another run with the heat. 
more flux, primarily on this side. And see if we can get those two balls looking nice. If not, then we can go ahead and reball it. In this case, I'll probably just put a new one on because if it looks like that, I might might as well not put a chip on. That may be bad. So that is fully reflown for the second time. Still looks kind of lousy, but after ultrasonic it may be better. So I'm going to test it here and then I'll look at it after ultrasonic and then I will decide if I want to replace that chip or leave it. It may be perfectly fine after ultrasonic because it may just be some junk left left on it from the corrosion. And after we clean it, it may just be washed away completely. So the board is still a little bit too hot. I don't want to turn it on yet. So I'm going to let it cool down for a second. And then I'm going to go ahead and test it here. Uh, that's cool enough, I believe. So remember, we our green light was gone before. It may still be gone if the chip failed internally. But let's see. Let's plug it in. And no green light. And I believe... I bet PPBus is still going to be 12.23 volts, so I'm going to check that here. So let's check. That is 12.23 volts. So in this case, the SMC itself is actually bad and will require replacement. So this is a 4924. SMC is going to be specific to the board that you are uh, working on, so you can't just take one off of another board and expect it to work. So we're going to go ahead and pull this off, and we will put a new one on. These are a little bit tricky because you have to reball it from a donor board. However, they are once you do a few of them, they're not really all that hard. That was off, and you could clearly see where there was quite a bit of corrosion under there. So, I'm gonna set this aside. Let's go grab a new chip. So as many uh, channel regulars know, the SMC is going to be a chip you have to reball from a donor board. So you pull this off of the donor board, you get this thing called a stencil, put solder paste in it, put the chip in it, and then um, melt the solder balls, and th that's how you get the balls on this. It will not work if you just take the, the chip and put it on from the donor board, because it needs, it's a BGA chip, you need balls on it. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. This process can be a little bit tedious. Um, sometimes it'll take a few attempts to get it right, sometimes it'll take one attempt, it really just depends depends on how things are that day. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, it's time to prep the board for the new SMC, and we could really see down there what was causing it not to work. A lot of corrosion right there. So this is kind of beyond what a reflow could have solved. There's just too much junk under there. Um, yeah, that ball is just completely falling apart. Look at that. There's nothing there. That's that, that ball is just completely degraded beyond belief. 
That would not have made an electrical connection by any means. So we're going to put some flux down, especially right here. Let's just drag our iron over it with a leaded solder. Just to pick up any of the old lead free solder and any of that corrosion and junk. And then what we'll do is clean it up and then um, wick it all away. And put our new chip on. So there should still be a pad here. I don't think we have any damaged pads. If we do, we may have to run a wire, which under the SMC will not be too fun in and of itself. So I'm just going to get this all cleaned up, though. Anytime. So we do have a little issue right here, and I'm going to explain this in a second once it's cleaned. So I think that's good. Anytime we get... This is going to be hard to see, but there's a little bit of exposed trace right here from cleaning it. It's hard to see, but that right there... We were, we're going to need to coat that because if we put the chip on and leave it like that, it's going to make contact and it's not going to work. The, the balls are going to bridge, so that won't work like that. So we will need to put a little tiny bit of conformal coating and then solved. No big deal at all. It's a common thing that happens. So I'm just going to wick all of the other stuff away. I'm being very gentle. I'm basically moving the wick. I'm not putting any pressure on the board whatsoever. You do not want to tear a pad enough to run a wire under this chip, as you will hate your life for doing that. So we're just going to wick this away. Keep going until all of it's gone. It looks nice and clean. This should be good. So now, let's clean this with a Q-tip and alcohol. Get all this old flux away. Put a little tiny bit of uh, green conformal coating down. And this will be good to go. Kind of, kind of important to have a nice clean surface. You put the chip down on it. At least I think it is. So I always clean all the flux off before putting a little bit of new flux down, because a lot of impurities build up in that, and it just doesn't work as well. So this is nice and clean. This is what I was talking about earlier. So what we're gonna do is get some conformal coating, as I said before, twice, or three times, or four times. Who knows? I repeat stuff. And just put a little bit there. You don't need a lot. I'm talking just a really, 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 really thin layer because we definitely don't want too much here. So I'm just going to use a little, little bit, spread it out evenly. We don't want too much, but we also want to make sure it's completely covered. And that should be plenty, just like that. So this kind of conformal coating, it is um, UV curable, so we're going to need to use the UV light. Given the fact we have a really short layer like this, a little tiny blast for probably about 15 to 20 seconds should be plenty. So we're just going to give this a nice blast of UV light. Easier to see if I turn my microscope light off. It's easier to tell when it's cured. And I'm going to look through here and through the microscope it's hard to tell through the camera but in person you'll see it when it cures it turns a different color and it is almost there. And that should be good. The heat will cure the rest. It's okay if it comes off um, after we put it on, we just don't want a bridge there, but that should be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and put a little more, little bit more flux down. Now we really don't need a ton of flux when we're doing this. A little tiny bit, like I just put like four dots or so, and spread it around. A little tiny bit is sufficient because it's we. If we put too much, the chip is going to want to float away, and that's not good. That makes a, your job a lot harder. So we only really need a little layer just to go between the chip and the board. And it makes uh, putting a BGA on a little bit easier. A lot of people starting will have issues with placement and having the chip run off. So what I do is I just put a little bit, just enough. Just like that. 
and this will help keep the chip in place and it won't run off as much as it would with um, putting a ton on. The issue with putting a ton on is the chip is just going to want to float away and it's, yeah, it's not going to be fun. So it's kind of hard to put an SMC on the wrong way because of the shape of the balls. So it should go, let's see, it's kind of hard to see through the microscope, but just look at it. If you don't know which way it goes, look at it without the microscope to see which, there's a little pattern right here as you can see. So there's a little pattern there. And it goes this way. So align it the best you can. It's going to pretty much align itself. You'll see what I mean in a second here. And of course, me saying that, it's probably not going to align itself and turn into a mess. So, but just get it close like that. You know, get it close enough. That should be perfectly fine. Don't use a high airflow. I prefer 430 at 30, uh, 30, 30 liters per minute on the quick so if you have a different hot air station it's going to be different but just heat it and then you'll see it go into place here very shortly here go into place or run off one of the two so it moved a little bit and there we go it's in place now we can use a higher um, temperature and completely flow it into place like that see it's moving around that's good to go The solder paste I use is leaded so it does melt at a lower temperature. And confirming under the microscope, we can see that looks absolutely beautiful. Everything's baking contact. So let's let this cool a little bit. Could even use my fume extractor to kind of cool the board a bit. Just to draw some air in there. In the meantime, switch back to the other camera and we will test and see if this works. So on these 820-4924 motherboards used in the 2015 a1502 13 inch MacBook Pro Retina. The fan will not spin default like the other ones would. So, our best indicator right here is going to be CPU V core. So, the fan may spin if the board is still hot enough, but I'm not going to keep my hopes up. But I'm going to plug this in and hope that the green light turns on. The green light does turn on, as you can see here. So, I'm guessing that the fan is not going to spin because the board is cool enough. It's below that threshold. So, let's go ahead and test CPU V core which is going to show up on these coils over here. So here's our meter. I uh, can't see that from the glare. So we're going to put one lead over here. We can see the board has 1.86 volts on CPU V core, which means it's turning on. To further confirm this, we'll plug it into an enclosure and boot and see if it works. OK, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. We have a test drive in here. No customer data is going to be shown. It's our store test drive. So plugged it in. We have a green light in the charger. Let's wait for it to post. Might take a second but usually these post pretty quick. Should see the screen backlight come on here. Retinas, it's kind of really hard to tell when the bright the backlight does come on. You're better off looking at the um, the Apple logo on the back of the screen. And it's actually on, it just does not see a drive yet because um, it may have an older version. So sometimes our stored drive has um, High Sierra on it. And sometimes the older ones, the boards that ha do not have High Sierra or new on, on it will show a question mark. But in this case, it just needed to see the drive for a second. And it does. It's booting. And let's see if it goes into the OS. Sometimes you'll get trolled by the uh, flashing question mark folder when in reality it's just the board is not updated for Mojave or High Sierra or Catalina. So you get, um, if it has anything older than that, it won't boot from it and you'll get thrown down a path. But yeah, this works fine. Trackpad works. Everything works good. Shows a battery. It's at 100%, so there's no need for it to charge. This is good to go. So thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you in some way.